Welcome to Shakespeare FC, The Sonnets, a five-minute journey into the iambic abominations on life, love, death, and desire, with a smattering of nature and naughtiness from the mind of our literary epicure from Warwickshire, or, as you become more familiar, Uncle Will. I'm your host, Kari Marshall. In his sonnets, Uncle Will wrote from a very personal place about the human condition, all in just 14 lines. But in that meager space, we can find an absolute wealth of human experience that you just might identify with. So, let's you and I go on a little journey. Today, the object of Uncle Will's affections seems to have come to the attention of a rival poet, and William is feeling a tad bit insecure. In the first quatrain of Sonnet 80, William admits to his lover that he feels weak when he writes of his love because... He knows that a better poet is also writing to them. This rival writer, in Will's eyes at least, in singing the praises of his admiration, seems to be using all his considerable mental might to make William tongue-tied, or more accurately, quill-constrained? Oh, how I faint when I of you do write, knowing a better spirit doth use your name, and in the praise thereof spends all his might to make me tongue-tied, speaking of your fame. In the second quatrain, William takes us to sea, metaphorically, expressing that his lover's worth is as wide as the ocean that both humble and proud sailors alike can sail upon. Uncle Will almost apologetically says that his boat, which is far inferior to that of his rival's, still insists on sailing upon his love's sea. But since your worth, wide as the ocean is, the humble as the proudest sail doth bear, my saucy bark, inferior far to his, on your broad main doth willfully appear. In the third quatrain, William, like a drowning sailor, asks for a lifeline, saying, even the smallest favor you can show me will keep me afloat, even as he sails upon your deepest ocean. Not incredibly subtle here. He continues, saying that if he is wrecked, it is because he is a tiny, worthless boat in comparison to his rival's grand vessel that one would rightly be proud of. Your shallowest help will hold me up afloat, whilst he upon your soundless deep doth ride, or being racked, I am a worthless boat, he of tall building and of goodly pride. In the final couplet, dejection overcomes our humble poet, as he says, If my rival prospers over me, and I am cast away, the worst part of this situation is that it was my love for you that was ultimately the cause of my ruin. Then, if he thrive, and I be cast away, the worst was this, my love was my decay. This is an interesting insight into Uncle Will's mind. Nowhere here is the confident poet of passion we find in so many other of his sonnets, nor is the angry, touchy, jilted lover here that emerges in his later offerings. But there does seem to be a sadness and almost a sense of resignation that he has been bested by a rival. We will see, however, that this isn't long-lived, as Uncle Will will return to form shortly. But until then, Sonnet 80 seems to be somewhat of an outlier, one where William seems to be channeling his sad and innocent inner grade schooler, one that is admittedly adept at rather heavy-handed sexual innuendo. <laughs> Well, alas and alack, my friends, that is all we have time for. Join us again next time for another hopefully informative journey into the mind of Uncle William. I'm Kari Marshall. Farewell until next time. Shakespeare FC is a production of WGTE Public Media and is sponsored in part by a generous donation from the Cowie Family Fund. All previous episodes are available at wgte.org slash sfc or wherever you get your podcasts.